Welcome back to Drunk on Writing, the Drunk on Writing show, brought to you in part through the patronage of Aria North and, this month, Justin Ludecker. Uh, welcome back, Justin, to the channel. And uh, as we're recording, uh, tomorrow is Justin's birthday. So from Drunk on Writing, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Justin. Um, hope you enjoy it. Um, Kim, how, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Today was a little, little trying with the kids. But, um, other than that, pretty good, you know, <laughs> today, today was a rough one, but, um, yeah, no, mostly, mostly, mostly pretty good. How about yourself? Okay. I have a little bit of a extended family drama kind of going on right now. That's kind of been driving me mad, but I've, I, I've been coping. I think, uh, uh, I recently got the PSVR and, and I've been kind of diving into that. It's been a whole lot of fun. Very cool. It's oh, it's awesome. <laughs> Highly recommend it if you can find one. They're very hard to find right now. Uh, supposedly, according to GameStop, uh, a GameStop employee I was talking to, they're getting discontinued. Um, the new one will come out in a couple of years, uh, PSVR 2. Uh, Sony has already confirmed that, but if you want the first one, uh, get it now. So are they going to stop supporting this? Sony likes to stop supporting everything. Um, will the new games work for the old system? Who knows? We don't know. Probably not. Well, so you better get games for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I've, I'm, I'm working on that. I've already... There's a couple of them that are free right now. Uh, there's a couple that I've, I'm planning on picking up. A couple I've, I've picked up already. Uh, like um, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. Uh, I've been playing Astro's Astrobot Rescue Mission was a whole lot of fun. Beat Saber, which is the one I primarily bought the system for. Um, I know that it's better on the Oculus, but I like my trophies and I like my PlayStation. I don't like playing on my computer. So, <laughs> uh, other than that, you know, I I, I got Invisalign recently uh, on Wednesday. I got it. Uh, so hopefully my teeth will stop hurting me. They've been hurting me for about a year or so. Um, my jaw has drifted over the years, and so my my upper teeth and my bottom teeth meet, and it hurts. And it's been pushing up one of my teeth. You could see it in any of the drunk on riding videos. My tooth looks weird. It looks it looks like it's chipped. It's just it's pushed up. It is chipped slightly. Um, I did have that capped at one point, and that broke off. So uh, before we get any further, uh, let me just adjust. Uh, address the lighting. Uh, last time, I felt the lighting was too bright. We'll see if this is too dark. Uh, I'm trying out different things. The problem is, when I when I have it on the camera, it all looks really good, and I can do a test, and it'll be fine. Until we film this and I get it up there, we don't really know for certain how it's going to look. So I'm always adjusting, always trying to make it a little better. The audio has been better. We're getting better at talking over each other, which made my edit last time horrendous. But it's good. We're, we're getting better. So, Kim, tell me, what have, what have you been watching? I feel like you've been watching a lot of stuff. I have been watching a lot of stuff. I, um, I've been watching a lot of romantic comedies on the treadmill in the mornings. Um, a lot of Netflix stuff. Uh, I started... Um, I think it's called Who Killed Sarah? And then um, I stopped and asked you if you wanted to watch it with me. And you pointed out that um, it was dubbed. And it totally turned me off. And I, I, I'm not watching that anymore. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, because, you know, I, I watch it on such a small... I watch it on my phone. So it's such a small screen on the treadmill. So when I was watching it, I I didn't notice it. And then we turned it on the big TV and it was so apparent. So yeah, I, I can't watch that. So uh, I, um, and a lot of stuff that I've seen before. I've watched The Wedding Planner. I watched Legally Blonde. Um, and then some just exhaustion stuff. You know, we turned on, I turned on something. Was it last night? I think maybe I saw 10 minutes of it. Maybe. Maybe. Um, and we finished The Good Place. The the thing that you, you said you saw 10 minutes of, that's when I was like, I'm, I feel like taking a nap. You do yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. 
a nap at 8 30 or 8 40 well, or something I was like that. tired so i was just i was basically gonna lie down yeah. uh, and, and and go to sleep while you did whatever but i just wanted to stay with you and you ended up falling asleep too <laughs> And we just yeah. fell asleep on the couch until like 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But. Yeah. And nothing, nothing more significant than a couple of rom-coms and, and finishing The Good Place. Yeah. Uh, so let, we're not going to do a full segment on The Good Place, I think, yeah. because we, we finished it so quickly and um, we just did the one on, on New Girl. I like I liked it. I, I really enjoyed it. The good place. I think there was there was a lot of thought put into it. There was a lot of philosophy, a lot of um, oh yeah, w w ethics. You know, there's a ton of ethics. The ending. You know, we just we just finished this last night. I don't want to get too into spoilers in case you haven't watched the show. I liked the ending. I I I really I I did because I I don't know how else they would have ended it. I think it for the show it worked perfectly i have a big problem in general with endings to things because i get invested in in a show right and i then you know start thinking about how i want things to happen and when things don't happen quite the way that i've envisioned it i get very upset um and I sort of feel like I, I've talked about Lucifer here before, um, and season 5B is about to be released at the end of May, and then there's a season 6. Oh, there's more after the season. Yeah, and there's a season 6. Um, I have a bad feeling about it. I have a terrible feeling about it. I have a terrible feeling it's not going to go the way I want it to go. Because I, I have thoughts about the way I want it to end, and it, it won't end that way. So You had thoughts about how you wanted The Good Place to The end. Good Place did not end the way I wanted it to end. Uh, in, in the 24 hours since we've watched it, I've come around to their ending. It's, uh, it's okay. It's not what I envisioned. But it's okay. Did you want some kind of happily ever yes. after? Yeah, I did. Well, I always want that in everything I watch. I don't like when things end any other way other than that. See, that the show didn't feel like a show that would have an, a, a happily ever after for it. I disagree with you. Did you watch the same show? I mean, it was all, <laughs> it was so thought provoking and like, like made you consider the afterlife and and how the current afterlife would have an effect on hum on humanity and how current humanity would have an effect on the afterlife sure but it's not what i wanted so that's all that matters Fair. in my mind and people will disagree with me and that's fine everybody can be wrong <laughs> okay okay no it's just i there's so much negative in the world when i watch something i don't want to see a negative ending because there's too much, there's too, just too much sad. So I want to watch something to enjoy it. And I want to see a happily ever after because not everybody gets that. True. True. Uh, for, for me, um, I finished, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. I think I had just started that last time. Really enjoyed that. Um, it, it's gotten Matthew into really wanting to play Spider-Man. That's pretty much what he does when he comes back from school. He just, runs around New York City, and then he, he talks about wanting to go into the city, which is fun. I'm like, eventually, we'll be back. Uh, apparently, I'm going back in July. Um, watched uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, or Kong, Godzilla vs. Kong, I think it's I think it's called. Also enjoyable, very much a beat-em-up. How you could not root for King Kong, I have no idea. I mean, he, he, he has empathy. He's, he's using tools. He's communicating. He's talking. And Godzilla is just a ruthless monster. Of course you think Godzilla is going to win. I mean, how, how King Kong could possibly fight against Godzilla? I don't know. But I was rooting for Kong. Yeah. I won't spoil what happened at the end. Um, of course, the PSVR, as I already mentioned. And as a special treat, we got to watch Spaceballs 
in the movie theater. We did. I forgot about that. I had a blast. Yeah. Doing that. It, it's been a while since I've seen Spaceballs. I've seen it a lot of times. But <laughs> I was cracking up in the, in the theater. And it was just the two of us. Yeah. Which was funny because um, we, we got um, that, what was it, what was it called? Uh, unlimited Pass. Or, or we bought out the theater, right? Um, and we go up. It was and, a Christmas present. Yes. And we go up and they're like, oh, who, who, how many will there be? And I'm like, just the two of us. And the, the woman at the theater was like, okay. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah. We had the whole place to ourselves. I got to, uh, I got popcorn, Skittles, a Coke. It was lovely. We walk out. There's one person left in the entire theater. <laughs> it was great. It, it was, was. It was really fun. It was nice to be at the theater and watch a movie it was a nice return to normalcy it wasn't the movie i probably would have chose to go to see but my christmas present <laughs> my christmas present i'm sure we would have seen some some rom-com or something or, or maybe some some like driving miss daisy like historical drama type thing yeah okay <laughs> and of course we also watched cats which leads in to our very first topic of the night. And I think we have a lot of thoughts on it. I picked this movie um, in honor of my former workmate, Kyle, who, when, when we were working together, had a weird obsession with this movie. It was talk, we talked about a lot about it, and he saw it, and he, it was like a spiritual journey for, it, for him. I told him we were going to do this, and he replied, Cats is a movie that took me, broke me down, showed me my pieces, and rebuilt me. Enjoy the ride. Don't watch sober. Fair. Uh, I, I tried to follow his advice. Um, and uh, I, <laughs> what a weird movie this is. But let's, let, let, me, let me give some background on this, on this movie. Cats is a 2019 musical fantasy film based on the 1981 Tony Award-winning stage musical of the same name by Andrew Lloyd Webber, which in turn was based on a poetry collection, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot. This film is directed by T Tom Hooper in a second feature musical following Les Miserables from a screenplay by Lee Hall and Hooper. The film features an ensemble cast including James Corden, Judi Dench, Jason Derulo, Idris Elba, Jennifer Hudson, Ian McKellen, Taylor Swift, etc., and so forth. Oh, Rebel, Rebel Wilson uh, was in there as well. Uh, it was released theatrically December 20th, 2019, to a negative response from critics who criticized the visual effects and editing. The film was a box office bomb, grossing $75 million on an estimated $80 to $100 million budget, and is estimated to have lost Universal Pictures $114 million. Substantial work on the VFX for Cats was performed at MPC Vancouver, which had previously worked on redoing the visual effects for Sonic the Hedgehog, much to people liked the, the redux on Sonic the Hedgehog. A report by the Daily Beast reveal, revealed a troubled production where sources within one of the VS, VFX studios reported the staff was working 80 to 90 hour weeks to try and finish the effects by the release date, while Hooper would send them denigrating emails about their work and insult them during conferences. Wow. The team spent six months producing the film's two-minute trailer, leaving just four months to finish the entire 110-minute film. The film's visuals were completed just hours before its premiere. Or were they? Because the film's original release contained numerous CGI errors and glitches. And unfortunately, most of the animators were laid off shortly after the film's production when NPC Vancouver closed. Very unfortunate. Now, to lead off our discussion, I want to note our comment from a lovely patron, the Cinephiliac, <laughs> who, when I announced the that Cats was our pick, said, I tried. For yous, I tried. I'm sad to report I aborted the mission. It was an honor to serve under you. And then in parentheses, salutes, then shoot self in the heart. The Cinephiliac, we thank you for your service, and we feel your pain. Kim, what did you think of this movie? Um, 
I went, so I, I have seen the musical on Broadway. I was going to ask, what is your history with the musical? Because I personally have never saw it, but I know you have some history I've seen of it. it. Yeah, as you could tell from my reaction from when you announced that we were going to watch Cats, um, I did not like the play. Um, I did not like the play. It was bad. I mean, it was just bad. I I was I I um I, I saw my mom on Easter, and asked her, "Do you remember Cats?" And and she said, "Yeah, I didn't like that." So I think it was it must have been a consensus a consensus, um, among us. Uh, so going into it, I was dreading it, and um, I. I kind of loved watching your reaction to this more than watching the movie. What? I knew what to expect. I I fully knew what I was getting myself into. You did not. And seeing your reaction was quite entertaining. So I enjoyed that more than watching the movie. Um, listen, um, since I knew the story... Was the movie good? Mm. Eh, it was all right. It was all right. It wasn't the best. Um, I think the talent, you know, singing, you know, they were fabulous singing the songs. Um, but I, the story just doesn't do it for me. It didn't do it in the musical, and it doesn't do it on on the, the on TV. So. Well, I think that's because there isn't really much of a story. Well, there's a story. It's just sort of all over the place, and I feel like they don't follow through on things. Like, did we ever find out the name of that cat? The, the name that she chose? Yeah. See, it, like, it just, it it starts with things. Like, they started off, like, introducing, like, hey, cat, you need to, I don't remember her name, sorry. Victoria. Victoria. You need to choose a name. It's like, she was the newbie, right? And uh, they're showing her the ropes. And then they never follow through. It's like, okay, well now, forget your name. We have to pick this cat. It's going to get a second chance, basically. And it's essentially what they do the rest of the movie. And everything else is just weird. I mean, then, then there's like a big story about this magical cat. And can he, can he bring, oh, it's just, it's just weird. It's just bad. So I will say watching this the first half of the movie was me trying to get over the animation because it was really weird animation uh uncanny valley to the ninth degree the nth degree it was just 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 weird stuff and especially at the very beginning where there are humans and there are human stuff and you see the scale of these little cat creatures who are humans cat size where there's regular humans and they're walking around and then and then they're 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 little mice people and then they're little cockroach people and they all eat each other and it, rebel wilson's whole thing was that she had an extra suit of cat fur over her regular cat fur and and like this this like dance outfit it there was so much weird weird extra weird stuff going on in this film and i assume it was like that in the play um just i i like i said i had never seen it but i know my mom who always saw musicals all the time when i was younger she was constantly going on broadway with her girlfriends um it was she came back and was like this is the worst thing i've ever seen so she did not like that i that was the first half that was the first half was 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 me what? yeah yeah so um what bothered me the most see I, I don't really get hung up on animation stuff a lot but what did bother me is they had human feet like that's just it just bothered me like why the hell do you i i i don't remember what the costumes were like in terms of their feet on broadway i would have to look at a picture but um it just threw me off and warren could not get over this one cat wearing pants like Every time you saw this cat, it just, you're upset by these pants. Because I can understand a cat wearing a jacket. Like, I've seen cats, like, have, like, a little outfit on. 
but to have just pants. I can't picture a cat wearing just pants. It just seems wrong to me. So when this cat was walking around with pants with the suspenders on, I was like, that's not right. That upsets me. And in, in terms of the, the hands and the feet, I'm not certain that they were supposed to have hands and feet. I think, you know, when, when we noticed that toward the end, I don't know if maybe they were just not done correctly. So back to my story, that was the first half of the, the second half. I started to really get into this film and I kind of liked it. Once they kind of got to the ball and they, they were doing all this and Ian McKellen came in and I thought he was great. And, um, uh, Jennifer Hudson did her numbers. I thought those were great. There was just, there was a lot that I really enjoyed in the second half, despite the story not making any sense. I just, I, I fell into it and I started to enjoy it. And I kind of, I kind of got into it. The movie was far too long. I don't know how it was two hours long. I don't know how the play is like three hours long. Don't know how that could possibly be. The story makes no sense. Uh, I, the, the, I, I, she went up into a balloon up into the sun and was reincarnated or something, or maybe she just went to Paris. I, I had the feeling like she was just going to float off to Paris. I don't know what actually happened. Why was Judy Dench in charge of the whole thing? Just because she was the oldest? So when she dies, is it Ian McKellen? Because he didn't look like he was up to this, to, to do this kind of thing. You know, I, I didn't get, I will say though, at the end of the movie, I wanted to go back and watch it again. You did. And I was like, oh, nope, I'm out once. Is well, I've seen it once on Broadway, once on movie. That's quite enough for me. Thank you very much. I still think I might go back and watch it just because I really fell into the groove in the second half. And I want to watch that first half without fighting to get over Good luck. the way that the film looked. Because that, that was the big issue. It's just it's just a weird film. And, and they're all calling themselves the Jellicles. And I'm like, what's a Jellicle? And apparently that's the cat gang, is the Jellicles. And she's a Jellicle now, or she is at the end, the main, the main girl, Victoria, who we were looking up in IMDb. She's not even in, like, the top billing. Like, she's, all, she's like, halfway through the, the cast listing. Because all the big names who are in there less than she is uh, are command the thing. I will say... Uh, Jason Derulo had the best. I, I loved him in this film. Um, I did not know it was Jason Derulo until Kim said it, only because he didn't say his name. I always hear him say his name. Every single song that he's ever done, he goes, Jason Derulo. Every single song. Listen to his songs. His song, his, his, he drops his name, like, in case you forgot who you were listening to, Jason Derulo. It's in there. It was a weird film. But I, I, I kind of liked it. And uh, before before we get to ranking, I do want to I do want to throw out the joke. We haven't done the joke yet. Uh -huh. Of course, the best joke, the best cat joke ever was in Super Troopers and will never, ever be topped. Uh, if you've seen Super Troopers, you know what I'm talking about. The meow. Meow. What are you talking about, sir? They, they replace now with meow and the whole the whole gimmick is to see how many times you can say meow while in during a conversation i'm not going to do it here because that's just going to be annoying but here is a joke that made me laugh we'll see if it if it works for you how do you know when your cat's done cleaning herself how she's smoking a cigarette very cute <laughs> Is he? Okay. I get it. Yeah, it it, yeah. it, it made me giggle, um, and I and I I do want to talk about the ranking here because Kyle again when when uh, he reviewed our last episode and said cats top three or I riot. I have the feeling you might riot, Kyle. Uh, let, let, let's let's look what's at what's no don't go no. to the, don't read the top. What's the bottom? You want me to start from the bottom? Go yes, all the way I do. All right, so here's our ranking as it currently stands. Number 10, Lights Out. Number 9, Nightcrawler. Number 8, E.T. Number 7, Enola Holmes. Number 6, Independence Day. Number 5, Free State of Jones. Number 4, El Camino. Number 3, The Irishman. Number 2, Knives Out. Number 1, Back to the Future. Kim, where would you place cats? Bottom. The very last? Very last. Below? I kind of like what Lights Out. 
I would also. It entertained me. Lights out. I didn't fall asleep. I could not keep my eyes open the first night, and we had to break it up into two nights. And I thought we would have to break it up into three, but you powered through. (laughs) Yes. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to concur, and I would put Cats in very last place. Uh, Even though I want to watch it again, even though it entertained me, what a travesty of a movie that this was ever made, that it was made the way that it was, that this was a Broadway play. I don't think it is anymore. I think it's a hugely huge. Yeah. Yeah. Now you, you had a, you had a point that you think maybe people were just going to see what the big deal about this was. Cause you know, it was a thing. Do you know anybody who actually enjoyed this? Because I don't. Um, Somebody did. I mean, it's Andrew Lloyd Webber. I mean, he's produced some amazing things. And again, the music is great. The rest of it? I don't know a lot of people that saw it on Broadway. Oh. I, I really don't. Okay. Um and again, it was years ago. I don't. I can't even tell you how old I was. Um, but it was a long time ago. It was one of the first Broadway plays we'd seen, um, at least that I remember. Kyle, I do want to apologize. Cats didn't was never going to make top three. I mean, when 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 you, the top three are Back to the Future, Knives Out, and the Irishman. It would have never made top three simply because I purely loathed it on Broadway. Like I knew, like you knew before you announced it that I was not going to like this. I knew that I was probably not going to announce it, but it felt like something that I had to see. And that's kind of the point of the video club is these movies that we have to see, that we want to see, that there's some kind of oomph here, desire to see these, to add them to our cultural lexicon. Mm -hmm. And that's what Cats is. I feel like it was something that was culturally relevant that had to be added in. I mean, I think the furries probably had a ball watching Taylor Swift. Apparently, there's a butthole cut where all of the cats have little tiny buttholes (laughs) that the animators put in. Apparently, that's out there. I'm sure people would kill to to get their hands on that. Um, Yeah. And I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna mention that part. Uh, the Jason Derulo thing. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> okay. This is this I know. is G rated. This is G rated. So That's like X. I am, yeah. Uh, so Kim, what is your pick for the video club for this month? We're going right into it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I. I really had a hard time this month because I wanted to do a film that is not streaming. Okay. It's oh. just not streaming. Um, I really want to do that one, but I want the viewers to be able to, to watch. So I'm not going to do that, but, um, my pick would have been the Godfather because I have not seen it. Your pick would have been the Godfather. Mm-hmm. If it was streaming. Has hell frozen over? <laughs> well, yeah, well. Yeah, I, um, I don't, I don't see the Godfather no, streaming so, any anytime soon, but we'll we'll get to there well, eventually. So here's here's what I did. I I I found a site um, that listed I don't know a hundred two hundred and fifty of the top rated movies, and I have to say I really agreed with like a lot of these movies, and one um, was. Uh, uh, Shawshank Redemption, two was The Godfather, uh, three was The Godfather two. Um, Godfather Part Three is not going to be on anyone's top list of anything except for the top worst sequels. Yeah, but there, but there were a lot of movies that I had seen on this list that I'm just like, oh, that's a great movie. Um, so I, I wanted to stick to something on there because I want to pick a really good movie because I feel like a lot of my movie picks are are bad. I just pick Cats. That's true. That's true. Um, but I'm also been stereotyped by you as somebody historical drama who 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 picks historical pieces. Um, and you know what? I don't care. I don't care. Um, I like them. 
So, um, I, I, I thought, I thought about picking a non-historical drama, and there is one play, playing that we could watch, but I'm sorry to say, I'm going to go with The Pianist. That's a good choice. That's a good movie. It's a great movie. I've never seen it. Great movie. The Pianist. Yeah. Uh, Adrian Brody, right? Yeah. Oh. It's streaming. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's on Prime, too, I think. I own that. We own that. Well, it's streaming, so we don't... Yeah. But either way. It's on Netflix and Prime? Yeah, I think so. You have no excuse. Watch The Pianist, because it, it is it is a fantastic film. At least I'm it, disappointed you've seen it. I've seen most modern World War II movies but it's a fantastic and i and i don't think i've seen it really since it came out yeah so it's been it's been a long time um i remember mostly the beginning and the end mm -hmm. so um we'll see where that goes but that's no that's a, I, that's a good choice that's a really good choice but it's historical like i really it's a historical so... drama <laughs> i wonder why you're typecast into in into they're so good though they're so good. Like, if you look at a lot of critically acclaimed films, a lot of them are historically based. Maybe not World War II, but historically based. I like history. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But that, that's a good choice. Where we're we're going to talk, then our next topic, uh, just to put an end cap on this. Yeah. Our next topic is our favorite musicals of all time. Will Cats be among any of yours? No. Cats is definitely not among any of mine. So goodbye, Cats. You served us well. I'm totally going to watch it again. Uh, probably not sober, as Kyle uh, <laughs> suggested. I just, I'm just going to dive in and just, and just be like, hmm, this is, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. So should we? Yeah. Yeah. So, Kim, this was your topic. Our, our top musicals Yeah, was your topic. Was it spurred on by watching Cats? Yes, absolutely. Um, other than historical dramas I uh, and rom-coms, I do enjoy a good musical. I think that comes from um, spending a lot of time with my grandfather. Uh, he, I mean... Musicals were the thing when he was um, a young man, and uh, he introduced me to a lot of really great movies and uh, kind of got my love of musicals going. So I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. What was his favorite musical? Do you remember? Um, I, I, I know, I don't know... Um, like one movie that he liked. I know he really enjoyed um, Fred Astaire. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't know his favorite. Which one's Fred Astaire? Is he the Sing in the Rain guy? No, that's Gene Kelly. Uh, I don't know if you know Fred Astaire, um, which is a shame. But uh, he was a very famous dancer. I know the name. Yeah. I just can't picture him in anything I, I i i mix up um him gene kelly and the other guy uh with a deep voice is that fred astaire who's yeah. bing crosby oh okay oh is that a musical too which one white christmas I would, I would certainly consider White Christmas a musical. Is it not a musical? I don't know. I might have to. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't you start? I might have to do some editing here. So I will say, so I, I, I picked out a, a five um, musicals here that I would consider sort of my top. Yeah. It's probably a, they're, they're mostly newer stuff. Mm -hmm. um, musicals are weird for me. Where I like a certain type of musical. Yeah. I don't like when the musicals break reality. And what I mean by that is West Side Story. I hate West Side Story. Oh, that's so funny. I was pondering picking that for our... <laughs> Thank... Please don't. Please don't. I don't... I... I... 
the snapping that this is fighting that they dance and it's like I hate I hate it I hate it 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 upsets me to know and, and probably because of where I grew up and me actually witnessing gang violence just just seeing just seeing it portrayed in such a way it just upsets me to know and and again if it was if it was like a fantasy version of it but no it's not meant to be like a fantasy version of it it's meant to be like this is how the stuff goes down they dance it's a dance off so when when it comes to musicals i like the stuff that is either portrayed in a way where the musical is weird and it's and it's like not necessarily reality like it's might be more of like in their mind or it might be set up to be like the musical um I like that kind of thing. So that that's where my list kind of comes from. So is your hatred of, of musicals simply based on West Side Story? Generally, yes. Wow. You need to stop that. That's just wrong. I like a lot of musicals. I have a musical playlist on my on my iPod that I listen to rather frequently. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. What so, are yours? So, you know, I mentioned the Andrew Lloyd Webber yeah. earlier, and I'm fairly certain that he wrote my top two here, um, which are Jesus Christ Superstar mm -hmm. and Evita. I really like both the Jesus Christ Superstar. I've I've liked since I was a kid. Uh, I, the original version, the, the 1977 or so uh, film, uh, which was based on, on the play, uh, I think is just utterly fantastic and we started watching it the other day but apparently but unfortunately our, our rental ran out we have to we have to buy that i don't know why we, we don't own it yet i love that i've always wanted to play judas in one of um in in a, in a production of that not because of him betraying jesus but because he has one of my favorite musical songs ever um heaven on their minds i Love that song. I know the lyrics. I can, I sing it whenever I hear it. I just want to, I just want to sing it. So much of that, that movie, I just, all the songs, I just want to sit there and sing. I could sing that probably front to back. In when I was in high school, when I was in choir, we did perform one of the songs. I forget which one. I think it was, I think it's, um, I think it's Mary's song. I don't know how to love him. I think. You did that in high school? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yep. I'm surprised. Why? Because it's Jesus. Yeah. Well, it's rather religious. Yeah, th that particular song is not not so badly, not, not so much. But uh, yeah, I I really I really like that. And Evita, um, while I I again never seen it on Broadway or anything, the and the Madonna movie is what I what I listen to. I enjoy that movie, but I really enjoy the soundtrack. I love I love the score of it. I love just the the beats of it. I, I sing that as well rather rather frequently. Antonio Banderas busting a move in there. They they have a great dance number. I rather enjoy. It. I, I love that they they wrap a lot of history into the lyrics and they teach you a lot of stuff about Avida, about Argentina, about Perón and it's all just right there. In the same with Jesus Christ Superstar, you learn a lot. And uh, we were watching with Matthew, and Matthew kept asking a bunch of questions uh, based on the lyrics, and like, why is this happening? And I would stop and I would explain. And and one th one thing I like about the original Jesus Christ Superstar film is it starts off with them driving to the desert. Um, I think it was filmed in like the outskirts of Jerusalem, the old the old um, ruins that are there or were there at the time. And they're getting out of the bus and they're all getting dressed up and like getting made up to put on the production. And then the production begins and it's like, it's like, it's very meta in that way. Um, and at, at the very end of the film, you know, once, you know, Judas dies in, in the, in the film, right. In, in the production, like Judas hung himself at the very end though, he's back and he, and he gets on the bus because it's all the play. Yeah, well, the first time I saw it, um, so I went to a Catholic school, um, K through eight, or pre-K through eight, but um, 
my eighth grade teacher had us watch this. And the first time we watched it, I did not pick up on that at all. So I was so totally confused. I'm like, what the hell is happening? Like, this is the weirdest, like, Jesus movie I've ever watched because we watched a lot of, like, you know, we, well, not in school, but we, we learned a lot about it and, uh, we watched more, I guess, animated, you know, because they do a little bit more historically accurate. I do remember watching a lot of animated Jesus stuff yeah. in, in religious yeah. school. Well, I, I don't think they're, they, they really make, you know, this stuff, but I remember thinking, this is the weirdest movie. And I remember going home and I'm like, because my, my dad is more knowledgeable about religious stuff. And I, I just remember saying to him, like, what's the weirdest movie about Jesus on a bus? <laughs> I watched a newer version of it. I think it was a, um, a 90s version of it where it was completely different aesthetic. It was very um, modern, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of steel, a lot of stuff. And they put Judas um, in a very different light where, whereas in the original, he goes to heaven and he comes back and he's an angel because he basically did God's will. And he, he was subject to God's will and he was kind of forced to do what he did. Um, in the newer version, he went to hell. Instead, and he came back as a devil and he had horns and he was he was a bad guy. He was straight up a bad guy. And I didn't like that interpretation. I, I, I never have. Uh, I, I have fundamental issues with it, but I think that plays well better to the modern audience who doesn't want to think generally. Yeah. So what what do you have on your list? So are we just doing top two? No, I, I mean, I have five, but I, I was talking about my two, so I figured you, I mean, if you want me to keep going, I, uh, up after that, I have Little Shop of Horrors and Chicago, or the next two, I, I like Little Shop of Horrors, Rick Moranis, um, and, uh, oh, what, what's the guy with the white hair? Steve Martin as yeah. the dentist, that's another role I've always wanted to do, was this, was the dentist in Little Shop of Horrors, I, I, I have a, I pick the, I pick bad guys that I want to play in the musical, but, but it's true. Like I, I would, I would love to sing. Like that's another song that I like. And, and, um, in the film version, uh, Bill Murray's in there as well. It's such a, such a great film. The, the, the work that they did with the puppet in that film. Um, I learned something new recently that when, when they filmed that, the songs were all played at half speed. And Rick Moranis had to sing at half speed because they couldn't puppeteer <laughs> faster. And then once once in the final film, um, it sped up to normal speed. So why why didn't Rick Moranis get like an Oscar for that? Right. Like he he did all that stuff with the plant at half yeah. speed. I mean that's pretty freaking cool. That is. Uh, my top two are um, singing in the rain. No, that's no surprise, right? And uh, A White Christmas. Tell me the fact about Singing in the Rain that you tell me all the time, like like that place where the, sea, where the, where the what was wall it, bombs. wall bombs yeah. was. We, yeah. There's a, a place that we drive by that for years, <laughs> Kim would say, wall bombs used to be there. And I'd be like, yes, Kim. Yes, you've told me. Um, in the famous uh, scene where Gene Kelly is singing, singing in the rain. In the rain uh, while filming that, he actually was suffering with the flu, um, feeling pretty, uh, he had a fever, um, while he filmed that, um, that and, must've been an awful experience. It must've been, but wow, what a, what a, what a pro because it's an amazing, who's the other guy that Donald O'Connor is he the, he's the tap dancer guy. Yeah. I like him. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah. He's amazing. He reminds me of, um, Mickey, Mickey Rooney. Well, that's probably never been said before. Why? Uh, really? Yeah, visually, I think they look alike. No? No. Mickey Rooney is the guy from the Mad, 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 Mad world, I've right? never seen that, but he, Mickey Rooney, isn't Mickey Rooney the one... You've never seen a Mad, <laughs> Mad, 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 Mad No, world? but isn't Mickey Rooney the one from the 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 Robin Williams film? With, on the horse in the museum? 
Mickey Rooney. Isn't that him? That was him way older. Well. And I don't think he was in that. Was he in that? Yeah, he might have been in that. But that was him way Dick older. With Dick Van Dyke? Yeah. Yeah, that was him way older. Like, when he was young, I'm talking about. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. But anyway, so those are my top two. Um, that and A White Christmas starring Bing Crosby and um, Rosemary Clooney. Related to George? Of course. That's his aunt. Oh. It's not a secret. He was very close with her. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's amazing that the Hollywood families are all intertied. I mean, it's, it's like the royal families. I mean, they're all like inbred yeah. with each other. We were, I, I, was, I was telling Kim that so today uh, was Prince Philip's um, funeral. And the BBC put up this, this photo collection of all of the family who was in attendance at the funeral. And they all really look like. And some of them you can tell were the product of just cousins being cousins together. It was very unfortunate. Like some of them are just, it's, it's a good thing that they're starting to marry outside of their family. I will say. Yeah. Well, rest in peace, Prince Philip. Rest in peace, Prince Philip. You know, he, he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's, um, he's out there. Yeah. But, but those are, of course, they have to be my, my top two. Those have been in my life, my God, since I was a young girl. I want to give a special shout out here to Chicago. I already mentioned it, but that is that film perfectly encapsulates what I want in a musical where there's a reality and then they transition over to non-reality during the songs. And it's mm -hmm. part of that. And we, we did see that one uh, at the Schubert and we saw that in person. Fantastic. What, what a, what a, and, and I, I will say, you know, honorable mention here to, um, uh, Moulin Rouge, which I also listen to rather frequently. Um, uh, but that's, that, that one, that's a crazy movie. You're very modern. Mine are very classic. Mm -hmm. Very, like very different. And, and, but I do enjoy like Moulin Rouge and, um, Um, Chicago's on my list. So, Singing in the Rain, White Christmas, um, The Sound of Music. Of course. Classic. Yep. Yankee Classic. Doodle Dandy, which not a lot of people probably will know, but it's, uh, Jimmy Cagney. Um. Well, I mean, if you don't, if you don't know the movie, you know the song. Yankee Doodle Dandy, which, yes, George M. Cohan wrote. Um, and, um, Chicago. What now? I did have a because I totally forgot White Christmas was a um a, I I I just forgot about it honestly, um and I did have another one on here. It was um Mamma Mia because I just think the soundtrack oh, yeah. to that is but the, just see I don't great. know if that one even counts though because, why because it, it, they were all songs that were just bent and and it's 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 basically like they they made a story out of um yeah. the ABBA songs. And that's fine, that's, but like, that's true. There, it it wasn't made for a musical. It was they made a musical around the music. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um. Well, so yeah. I took that one off, and and so that's my list. I want to give a special shout out here to Carrie the musical, which was has been dubbed the one of the worst things ever to be on Broadway. But I listened to the soundtrack of that as well, and I rather like it. It's really weird there's a lot of there's a lot of praying and jesusing and and pig slang in in the and it's 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 odd and i can understand why why there's there's an episode there's a dissection a stephen king dissection that i did on that um it's it's fun there was one that that was on the tip of my brain that i was surprised that you didn't bring up oh. a, um a classic musical that i feel like we have watched Easter Parade. Is that not a musical? Well, um, no, it is. It is. Um, I do really like that movie. Um, not as much as these, though. Really? I mean, Sound of Music is just how can you... I mean, um, Easter Parade is great. Um, it's a good story. Honestly, I can only remember the one song, mm. so it doesn't stand out to me. Mm. Love watching the movie. Um, what's the movie with the weird scarf scene? Singing in the Rain. Oh, it's a weird scene. Yeah. 
honestly, if they picked that scene out and plucked it, put it off to the side, I would be completely happy because you know I don't like that because it's a very modern part of the film. Um, but uh, it's still a great movie. It's just such a good movie. I almost wanted to add La La Land into my mix, but I, I don't feel like that's a musical. It has musical really? numbers in it, um, but I there's it's more they, they play music. Like a lot of it is I like would they totally play jazz. think that's you would call a, that a yeah, totally. I really like La La Land. I know you. I, I have uh, I have the uh, Sebastian and uh, oh, what's her name in that? I don't know. I have I have the two of them uh, on the back shelf. You could see them in every episode, uh, except for you know the drunken riding shows. But they're 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 back there. I, I yeah. I mean, I just think. My, my my I'm honestly singing the rain is just my favorite. I just have to singing keep rain, going back one. to that because. So your number one is singing the rain. My number one, Jesus Christ Superstar. Hundred percent. I mean, I I watch clips of singing in the rain. Moses supposes. That's true. Like I love that song. Love it. What's the one where where he like goes around that the room? He dances onto the, like this. Make him laugh. Yeah, but what what is that laugh. singing in the rain? Yeah, oh, singing okay. in the rain. A lot of a lot of the classics in there. Yes, of course. It's a great movie. Have we watched a a, a musical for the video club? I don't think we. I have. I don't think we have. Uh, there, yeah, no, I don't think we have. A lot of them don't stream. West Side Story is streaming, but I please don't. <laughs> um, I ha Do we have? We must have singing in the rain. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it's not streaming. So oh well, well but well, it's absolutely my favorite. Sound of Music is also pretty up there. Um, that is historical though. Mm -hmm. I've actually been there. Do, you know where she does the the hills are alive, which is not in Vienna, which is where the movie is based in there. Vermont. The rolling hills of Vermont that everybody knows and talks about. Yeah. It's so pretty there, though. Why haven't you taken me there? We've been to Vermont. We've had Ben and Jerry's ice cream at the factory, and you didn't take me to these rolling hills from the hills are alive with the sound of music? Because it's... I want to go and do the... I want to recreate it. I want to go. <laughs> All right. I'll get, I'll get us there. I'll ask my dad where it is. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So any other... Any final thoughts on top musicals? No, they're all so good. <laughs> I just love them. Yeah, I'm going to listen to my musical playlist tomorrow. Yeah. Or Monday. Tomorrow's only Sunday. That's good. All right. Yeah. So let's, let's move on to our final topic of the night for the non-patron version of the sure. show. My apologies on that one. Uh, I filled up the memory card, apparently. Uh, I, I had no idea it was that full. Uh, that uh, that sucks. And um, I'll splice in something, I'm, I'm sure... You've already watched it, so it's it's not too bad. But the the audio is all there. Um, I I just this is this is why I want to get a different camera um, because it's just it's just hard to track all this stuff. And and you know I, I feel bad um, asking you to re-record if, if if it was like a, a dissection or something. I would just re-record because it's all scripted and up. Uh, we can. I I know we can, but I don't want to. Yeah. You know I I don't I and I appreciate you. Do, spending the time and doing this with me every month and i love doing it with you but uh i just i i, I don't want to force okay. you to do it again you know mm -hmm. so uh, let's just we're gonna roll into our next topic and uh this and the patron exclusive topic afterwards okay we'll record because i just cleared off the memory card so should, we should be perfectly fine so this one was inspired by the good place there's the scene uh, toward the end, slight spoilers here, where the universe is going to end in half an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And Chidi, one of the main characters, says, get me some warm pretzels. I don't want the world to end on an empty stomach. And I thought to myself, and you had a very similar thought, uh, you voice, warm pretzels. That's what you're going to eat. At the end of the universe, warm pretzels. That's your final meal before all goes kaboom. Spoilers, it didn't. But of all the things that you could possibly eat, 
Now, warm pretzels, I have nothing against warm pretzels. A good warm pretzel dipped in a little bit of mustard, especially like a New York kind of like street pretzel. Mm, so, so good. Mustard. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen you eat. And we've been together now how long? I don't think I've ever seen you eat mustard. Never. You're not paying attention. Mustard? Yeah. You and mustard? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, so so I thought to myself, there's no way in hell, I, if, if I had half an hour left, that that is what I would go out on. So I had this thought. What would be our last meals? Now, you could take this as last meal at the end of the universe or, you know, last meal if you're on death row kind of thing. So... I, I said, let's put together our last meals. And uh, if you'd like, I'll go first to kind of set the stage. Or you can go first. No. You know what? Why don't, why don't you go first? Because yeah, mine ahead. is, I I went all out and extravagant yeah. with my listing. It is, I want it. So, what, what Kim, t- t- tell us about your well, last Well, so, so I thought about this and um, thought about, like, which meals really stand out for me? Right. And I, I'm going to start like appetizer, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to have some bruschetta, but bruschetta with like the buffalo, buffalo, <laughs> buffalo mozzarella from Italy. Like mm-hmm. we had in mm-hmm. Italy where it's, it's not like imported. It's like the legit stuff. That was good. Right. Mm-hmm. With some like, like a, the, the balsamic vinegar from mm-hmm. the region. Like that would be like mm-hmm. just amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my, like, my main course would be, so we had a dinner several years ago, um, 2010-ish, I think, um, in, in Las Vegas, MGM Grand, uh, Wolfgang Puck's, uh, restaurant, and it was just amazing. It was just an amazing pasta dish. I loved every bite of it and i was sad when it was gone that's true and you will occasionally bring that meal yeah up, yeah but you don't know what it is i don't know what it is but i did pull up his his menu and if i was going to order from him it would be the um rigatoni fennel sausage bolognese regatta with italian parsley dish um is that what you had it kind of sounds like it, it sounds it's very similar to what i had yeah um, so I'd have that, of course. And then, um, for dessert, we would have that, l- I don't know the name of it because nothing was in English. Um, but we had a lemon thing in, at the Amalfi Coast, remember, with, with Mark and Amanda. And it was so good. It was, it was so good. I would have that for dessert. Um, and I, I would, I would have a lemon soda from Italy. Not, not like lemon soda people who are like, ew, that's gross. No, no. The black can with the lemon on it, the yellow lemon from Italy. I think we just need to be in Italy. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Other than the Wolfgang Puck <laughs> thing, you were like all the stuff from Italy that we had. But the Wolfgang Puck restaurant was Italian. So <laughs> We had some great meals in, in Italy. The, the the squid ink pasta. Yeah. It sounds disgusting, but man, it was it See, and, and that was in Venice. That was in Venice. That was in Venice. And I had that same night, you had an amazing squid ink pasta, but that same night I had um, a gorgonzola gnocchi. Um, And don't get me wrong, it it was absolutely delicious, but I, I am not used to eating cheese like that. Wow. That made me sick. Like not sick. I was just severely nauseous. Remember? It was awful. It was terrible. I want to tell you something. I don't remember all the times of your life that you've been nauseous. (laughs) I don't remember all the times of my life that I've been nauseous. I know you keep a mental list of every single moment in your life that you've been nauseous. The rest of us, not so much. Yeah, I remember the 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 pasta because it was freshly made. Uh, the 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 wine came in a pitcher. Uh, it was the house the house wine. I don't remember and, that. And it was uh, it was so good. The the Amalfi Coast one I had. 
uh, a, a, a scampi. Yeah. It was it was seafood scampi with all freshly caught seafood. And that the, did not look good to me. I'm not gonna. It was delicious, it but it was a lot of work because the shrimp was whole shrimp it was that just, I had to completely de. Warren, it was de-vein. a it was a plate. It was like they went and they <laughs> got the net and then just cooked it and put it on your plate. And that's pretty that's much what it was, did. but it was delicious. It looked it that, looked like a plate of of that that sea meal, turtles. That meal was insane because we we had. To, there were four of us. It was our, our one week anniversary af, uh, on our honeymoon, and we all ha- got an appetizer. We all got an this, entree. This we, sounds weird, though. Why? So for our honeymoon, we went on a a Italian um, group tour. It, it like when you're saying we went on honeymoon and we all uh, like all. Well, of... well, we were on a tour with another couple who had just been married. They got married the same day that we did. And so we celebrated one weekend, and they were a lovely couple, Mark and Amanda, hey, if you guys are watching. Um, and we all got everything. We had like four bottles of wine, uh, all had individual desserts, and the bill came, and it was like a hundred bucks for everything. And we were just floored because if it was in the U.S., that would have been like a three hundred dollar well, meal. The price of wine is oh, the price of so wine. different. So different. Remember, we got that bottle of wine at the at the Vatican. At the Vatican. We got this little tiny thing. Cheaper of, than of, soda. Yeah, it was cheaper than soda, which is why we got it. It was cheaper than soda, cheaper than water. <laughs> we had this thing. It was basically one glass of wine each. And we were buzzed off of this wine, walking through the Vatican, <laughs> which is bad. Which was but completely it's... unintentional because we did not expect to get no, a buzz. Not at all. I mean, it was just because that... just... we had pasta with it. Yeah, we it had. Wasn't... It was a good meal. Yeah. Um. So. I want to talk about my last meal. Like this is this is a journey, and it's a it's a good variety of food. Now, I'm a, I'm a relatively simple man. I like my simple things. Um, you know, I, I mentioned Justin at the top of the video. He would he would laugh at my listening and be like, "Oh, you got to have like some caviar or some like poached duck or something." I don't know. He 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 has some food in his repertoire now. I, that's my preface here, because here are my appetizers. Pigs in a blanket with spicy mustard for dipping. Again with the mustard. Again with the mustard. I've never seen you eat mustard. She doesn't pay attention. That and white castle sliders. Just a tray of white castle sliders. Maybe like four or five of them. No, okay, so we got white castle sliders, pigs in a blanket. For the main entree. Again, we're going with two. Peppy's, a famous New Haven pizzeria. Peppy's Clam Casino Pizza. Oh, so greasy. So good. It's got bacon and the clams. Oh, so good. That and the Mahi Mahi Steak from Michael Jordan's restaurant. Michael Jordan's Steakhouse. The best cut of fish I've ever had. I ordered it. And they're like, how, how do you want it cooked? And I'm like, it's fish. I don't know. However the chef says it should be cooked. It comes back, it's like raw. And I'm like, well, this is how the chef wants it. It just melted in my mouth. It was just like, it was just like I took a piece of butter and just stuck it in there. But it was just, it was the best fish I've had. One of the best meals I've ever had. That, that particular steak. We're washing all of this down with a bottle of two roads igor's dream it's a it's a coffee a coffee stout i think is it a coffee stout it's a stout of some of some sort fantastic i'll probably go with probably go with like a 20 2014 2015 vintage along with a mint chocolate milkshake mint chocolate chip milkshake not necessarily the mint, the mint milkshake from McDonald's, because I think it's not as good as it used to be. But uh, there's a little place, Danny's, over here that has a mint chocolate chip milkshake that's just delicious. You have too much of it, you don't feel so well. But a nice little one, just a little, not dessert, just a little aperitif. What what was your what what's your comment, Kim? So for my meal, my last meal, I've got to travel all the way to Italy. For mine, 
it's a run to stop and shop and a well, trip to New Haven, which is 20 minutes. And Michael Jordan's restaurant, which is at... Okay, so I'll leave you that. It's, it's an hour. And then for dessert, Thai fried bananas with French vanilla bean ice cream. And where do you get that? Uh, the Thai fried bananas uh, you can get at the That's Thai fun. place over here. French vanilla bean ice cream you can get at Stop and Shop. <laughs> and Turkey Hill, baby. Right there. I am a simple man. Like I said, all of this is all of this is just so good and if it wasn't your last meal because of something else it definitely would be last meal because it would kill you that's disgusting what is disgusting about it's disgusting it? to make all that stuff in one sitting it's my last meal i'm going out in fashion oh you're going out sick to your stomach is what you're doing whatever maybe, maybe you know maybe you know, either the universe is ending or I'm ending in some fashion. I'm going to go out with a nice meal to Clams Casino. It. Clams Casino. And raw fish. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 cooked to the point that you can eat it. It's not it's not like raw raw. Or maybe it was. I don't know. But it was delicious. Whatever it was. And it sat perfectly well in my stomach. I remember that meal, too. I I ordered a salad, which was like this big, which I did not know. And then I was so hungry, I ordered a side of fries, which was also like this big. And it was like $80. It was so expensive. Talk about the complete opposite of, of being in Italy. I was so hungry after that meal. That reminds me of the meal that I had. I talk about this. I talk about this all the time. Um, my uncle threw a, uh, a family reunion uh at, for thanksgiving i think it was because it was what it was we saw the macy's day parade at the same time with the same trip uh in new york he rented out a hotel um and we we were all hanging there and he brought us this extremely fancy uh restaurant and i was young uh, i was i was very young i was 10 if if maybe if that and uh i ordered the ravioli nice simple thing and it took about an hour for us to get our food because there was probably about 20 of us it took them forever to cook now as a reminder when i was 10 i was fat i was i was a chunky little kid i liked food i still like food and i'm still not a very small person but i was a lot larger in size proportionally at the time the plate comes and it's a big plate like it's 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 like this size. It's a huge plate. You got a nice little bowl in the center. So they're they're divvying it out, and they put it down in front of me. And I think, I think there were four ravioli on the plate. And I remember I remember looking at it and looking around and me like, what? is this all the food that I'm getting? And I ate it, and they were the best ravioli I've had in my life. But there were only four of them, and I was still hungry. Yeah. And when we when we left, again, I'm really hungry. And this is like 8 o'clock at night. I'm like, I need to eat something else. So on, on the way back to the hotel, we passed a, um, a New York, a New York uh, a hot dog vendor, and I bought, I bought a hot dog. Oh, that hit the spot. Can't go wrong with a New York hot dog. It's got that, it's got that flavor of the... Uh, sewers in it. It's got that nice little oh, flavoring in there. Don't, 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 don't. I don't know what it is. It's the New York water. The New York water is is very it's, good. It's not the sewers, and the New York water is some of the cleanest water. That's what I'm out saying. There. It's very good. Um, but the the hot dogs are just delicious, and uh, I think my love of them goes all the way back to then, where uh, I got disappointed by these four little tiny ravioli and I had to fill my nice little fat stomach up with a New York hot dog. Yeah. And it did. And it was, it was very nice. And my, my dad bought one, I bought one and uh, we were walking back, uh, eating our hot dog as we walked back to the hotel. Okay. It was lovely. It was a lovely little memory. You know, that, that and the, uh, the cheap, uh, two bros, uh, $2 pizza. I think it's $3. If you want a soda, it's two slices of pizza and a soda for like three bucks. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong with that. Mad. 
I do kind of miss New York. I'm not going to lie. Well, any other thoughts on last meal? No. No, I think I, I, think I, I pretty much wrapped it up. Uh, I, I think though that that is what I would go to. No, no foie gras, no, no like um, marrow butter or any of these kind of things like that. Simple, keep it local. Yeah. All the stuff that I love, I can get right around here. So, if uh, at any point I'm getting near the end and you want to feed me, I got you a nice little list. Yeah. Don't forget the spicy mustard. Okay. I I see it. I I never ever. In fact, we have debates on mustard or ketchup. Well, it doesn't go on. The, I, I don't put it on a hot dog. I don't put it on a hot dog. But you dip. I will totally dip a uh, pig in a blanket in mustard, as well as as well as a pretzel, a soft pretzel. Okay. Mm. Not a hard pretzel. Imagine dipping a hard pretzel in mustard. Yeah, it'd be good. <laughs> no. So uh, this has been uh, the latest episode of the Drunk on Writing Show. Again, I apologize for the middle segment cutting out uh, visually. Um, was... What can I say? You know, technology sucks. Pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> uh, for patrons, uh, I'm going to discuss the Vita and kind of go over some Vita memories because PlayStation, Sony is basically killing it. Uh, so I'll get my thoughts on that in a minute. Uh, but for the rest of you, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, enjoying this. Uh, thank you for, for riding us along with uh, with our pleasant memories here. Uh, this is one that's been a lot of memories, I feel. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool to explore. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you would like to see the next segment, remember, head on over to DrunkOnWriting.com and sign up. Every, I think everybody gets it. Maybe only the two dollars. up. I don't forget. I forgot. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can, while you're there, you can get more shows more often uh, along with a bunch of bonus little goodies. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's a good time. Uh, right now, I am animating uh, a new show and that will be coming out soon. I broke the animation uh, the other night, and I figured out how exactly how I'm going to do it. And uh, I had to go to the library, but unfortunately, I didn't get the time to go today. And I think they're closed tomorrow, so I will go Monday and do all that. So uh, it will be up soon, uh, and I'm I'm excited to really get to work on the second episode of that. The first episode's already up, and wasn't much animation in that, but um, it's coming. So. Uh, until next time, until you get to see all that. And for non patrons, I don't know when that's going up. It's going to be a while. So <laughs> until next time, cheers and keep on writing. For patrons, stick around. Let's let's talk the Vita. Mustard. Yeah. You don't eat mustard. Yeah, I do. When? With certain things. When was the last time you had mustard? Uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Yeah, With I had, what? I had it on a sandwich because the bread was too dry.